I'm here with Mark Nelson, and Mark is going to show us how to make a sand cast bead frame. Mark, this is an right. awesome project. It's really cool. It's really fun. Um, so we got to get started right away. Okay, let's do it. First of all, what you want to do is you want to carve a master frame or anything else that you want to cast in a rigid material like wax, wood, something, can, something that can take some pressure being pushed into the sand. Okay, and it has to be divisible by two, right? Right, right. So you can pull two halves of something apart. And you'll okay. get that. We'll in explain minute. that later, yeah. Right. You ready to get started? Yes. Okay, so first what we got to do is we got to chop up this sand. And this is special sand uh, from the Netherlands. It's mm -hmm. engineered and designed for sack casting. But you want it nice and kind of soft. And it powdery. feels kind of powdery, right? A little powdery, a little oily. Um, you're going to take half the mold frame and you're just going to push it in and pack it. And you take a hammer and you want something with a flat face. Pack it down as much as you can. As much as you can. And then what you want to do is kind of scrape it off. Do these mold frames come in different sizes? Uh, there's one that's a little bit larger, but you can make your own mold frame. Oh, okay. Um, I know some people that use tuna cans. Oh, good idea. And um, it works out really well. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take this, your master, and push it in there. And this, this is why it needs to be able to withstand some pressure. So you wouldn't right. want to do a really delicate design for right. this. Right, exactly. And then we need to separate it because I'm going to pack the top and I don't want them to stick together. I'm going to take some jeweler's talc, sprinkle it on, take a uh, brush, kind of smear it around, and just put a little barrier right here. So that when you pull it apart, It'll separate. it won't stick. Now this is really important. There's two indicators on here. They have to be lined up. These are your registration marks, okay? And if they're not lined up, you won't know how to put the two halves back together. Okay. And now we're going to pack the top. And this one you can pack pretty heavy. The tighter you pack it, the better the next step is going to be, which is cutting your vents in your pore channel, okay? Uh, otherwise, if it's real loose, all your channels will come out and they'll fall apart. Now that's probably about maybe half of what I would do. I would do it there again twice as much. And what do you mean? What I mean is I would add more. This more will, sand. Right. This will and pack. And keep tamping it. Mm -hmm, until it just won't pack anymore. Okay. And that would take a couple more minutes. For the purposes of our demonstration, we'll just right, call right, it good. Right. Because that would take a little more time. And then you, there again, you're going to shave off your excess. Okay. Okay. So now we go on to the next step. Next step is going to be cutting the vents in the pore channel, okay? And it's important to vent it because... Well, when you pour metal into a cavity, if, if the air inside that cavity has no place to escape, it won't go in there. It won't go in there. So you need to give it a uh, flow for the metal to go okay. to. And here again, my lines are, are still and lined up. Mm -hmm. And here's another master that I had. You can pull that out. And your channel, your port channel needs to be uh, at least four millimeters. So use a drill bit? Mm hmm Use a drill bit, drill that out. And you can do your vent holes the same way. And what you want to do is just carve this out. And that's your funnel, basically. Mm -hmm. And you want to carve it out nice and big. Recap it. And now we're going to be ready to pour. Okay? So to pour... I have an electro melt which is really heating up the metal. This is bronze and it's heating to 1950 degrees. But it would vary depending on what type of metal you're using. Right, right. You got to consult the melting temperature on that. Do you want me to move this out of the way? Yes, please. And then we're going to get out a little safety tray. All right. There we go. So I saw you put on your glasses and your gloves. You want to be really cautious when you're working with this type of Very material. Very safe. I'm also wearing a leather apron. In case I see that. Splash. I'm going to stand back. <laughs> yes. A little further, maybe? A little farther? Know. Okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll just be outside. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to crack this open. You can see how hot that is. Okay? Oh, yeah. And then we're going to grab it. we got to be fairly quick because it will cool down. So you're pouring the metal now right into that channel that you made. Mm-hmm. There's our flame. 
How do you know how much when it starts to bubble out the top? When it starts to bubble out the top like that. Now when you're calculating how much you need, you're just going to have to kind of guess and then double it. So whatever you think you need, times two. <laughs> times two. Times so two. So you're quenching it in, is that just water? Just water. To cool it down? To cool it down. And uh, what's really neat is when you're done, you can just pull it apart, and there's your casting. That is amazing. You push it out and break it out, and you can reuse all this, except that what's black. Uh, whatever's black, you kind of flake away, and you reuse everything else. And um, So you would chop it up with your blade again. Right. So when you take it out, it looks like this? Looks like that. And you're after cleaning, brushing with a toothbrush. And then um, you'll take your jeweler saw, cut off this big sprue, and you can reuse all this metal. You'll just melt it down again. Right. In your furnace. Mm hmm Or with a torch. Okay. So it's a great way to make multiples of things or unique designs. It's really beautiful. And it, what a what, great way to bring this traditional technique, too, to contemporary jewelry making. I love the speed frame that you made. Right. Thank you. You could frame anything in here. You really could. Well, thank you so much, Mark. This is always a treat. And that's our show. Please join us next time as our theme, All About the Beads, translates to an entire show on pearls. You won't want to miss it.